Hi, my name is Cameron. Welcome to this channel where we discuss online cybercrime and computer hacking. So in this video, we'll be discussing my experience with EJPT. EJPT, for those who don't know, is a beginner, easy certification for penetration testing. It stands for eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester and covers everything from internal infrastructure testing to web application testing. So I thought I should make this video uh, as a write-up uh, of my experience with it and uh, what you could be expecting. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I officially started learning penetration testing when I was about 15 or 16. Someone got me into it by giving me a USB with Kelly Linux on it for one of my birthdays. Um, I didn't know much at this time, very little. I was probably by every definition a script kiddie. Um, I knew how to run one tool. Um, it was ZenMap. So for those who don't know what ZenMap is, it was an NMAP GUI version. Uh, I didn't know what to do with the results. I didn't know reporting existed or what reconnaissance was. I, that's literally all I knew how to do was literally just to do run that tool against an IP address that I have access to, that I authorized by myself. And um, that's literally all I knew how to do. So that's where I started off. I knew no networking or anything like that. This was when I was about 15 or 16, bearing in mind. So when I started A-levels at 17 years old, um, I was doing A-level study in the day. I would go home, study maybe about three or four hours of A-level content, and then in the evenings, like in the late evening, so probably about eight or nine-ish at night, I would then load up my Kali VM or my dual boot and just start learning a bit more about Kali Linux in my spare time. So. I wouldn't learn anything like networking that was covered in my computer science vaguely. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute, but it was just basic things. So for example, hack exploit videos or um, some vulnerable machines or something like that. Nothing too, uh, nothing too in depth. So my A-level computer science um, talked about a bit about networking, but it was very basic. It wasn't anything in particular that was um, amazing help for penetration testing. They would talk about, for example, what ports were, uh, what a firewall is, and things like that. So it wouldn't be anything in depth for network engineers, so for example, configuring firewalls, and it wouldn't be anything for penetration testing, like how to exploit uh, a victim through ports or anything like that. It was just the bare necessities of what you needed to know for a network. Because of COVID-19 happens, uh, when I was doing my A-levels, um, I finished in March of 2020, so I had a long time up until September, which was when I was uh, inclined to start university. So I took um, that time, uh, that free time I had, to learn a bit more about web app, as that was kind of an area of interest for me that I kind of had a passion for, but I didn't know too much about it. So what I decided to do was um, I used OWASP Juice Shop to start learning some more basic fundamentals for it. So um, you can look up what that is, but just as an overview and a definition, it's just a vulnerable web application that you can use to test out some manual attacks. So things like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, things like that. Um, nothing too in depth. They didn't talk about the methodology or anything like that. There was no um, like reporting or any methodology, like I've said. It was literally just, you know, here's a user input, try to do SQL injection or something like that. Uh, so I did that for the first month I had off. <coughs> After that, I then decided to um, get a, uh, a full-time job. So I worked in a warehouse for a bit. Um, and then after that, I then did my internship before I started university. I didn't realize that me doing OWASP Juice Shop was just scraping the surface of what I needed to know for web application penetration testing. So let's talk a bit about the course. So I bought the course for about $200. I bought that around uh, 31st of August, 2021. Uh, I then proceeded to procrastinate doing it uh, up until starting September. So uh, I procrastinated a few months of it and then I slowly started working through it whilst doing full-time university. So I did it a bit on the side, things like that. Um, it wasn't anything in depth. Um, but I did spend a lot of my time going over the PDF slides and also uh, doing some of the labs as well. And that's actually, the labs were some of the videos I've actually made on this channel for. So um, yeah, they are, they are good labs. Uh, this was before 
uh, Elon Security got bought uh, or like partnered with INE, which is the parent company of Elon Security. So I didn't have uh, access to the abundance of information I do now with the pass, uh, with like the yearly pass. I literally just spent $200, uh, got the content for PTS, which is Penetration Testing Student, which is the course for EJPT. Uh, and that was all I got. So um, yeah, so it was really good to do an internship before I got the certification. Uh, the internship, uh, I won't go into too much detail because I've already done a day in the life video on it. But the ones that um, had value for this certification from my internship was uh, NetSec 101 and also Web App 101, which is um, internal infrastructure penetration testing and also web application penetration testing. So the overall course material for uh, PTS, which is the course, um, was really good. I, I really loved it. It was really clear and uh, concise for how you can understand it. Uh, I did learn a lot from it. So for those who don't know, the course is you get PowerPoints um, or like, like PDF slides or like PowerPoint slides, things like that. You get that and that will have a lot, a lot of information in. So we'll have um, an abundance of information for the theory, knowledge, and also the practical knowledge. You would then have potential exercises to do, videos, and also labs. So ideally, this is what I did. Ideally, what you should do is you should do the, the PDF slides, and then you should do the, watch the videos, um, as that is implementing the practical knowledge you learn in theory from the PDF. And then you should then do the labs and try to do those yourself. So it took me a while to do a certification. I see on LinkedIn people pass it in about two weeks. That wasn't my case. So this was my first certification I got. And um, because of that, I decided to hype it up into space and never actually get around to doing much of it simply because I was too worried about, oh, this is my first certification. How is the exam gonna be? You know, doing things like that. I didn't do much research on it before I bought it. I mean, I did a bit but I didn't do nowhere near as much as I did for EWPT and uh, what I do now for ECPPT. So um, I'll do videos on those in the future. Um, I'm still working on my ECPPT, but EWPT review can come out soon. But I didn't spend, so I spent time doing it, but it was a few hours um, every night or like every other night or something like that. So it took me a while. I think it took me about five or six months to actually get certified in it, simply just because I was putting it off for so long, like actually learning like full time for the content. So this is um, a beginner level certification, as I've said um, at the start. Uh, it's quite a good certification. It does cover some basics and also some uh, some attacks, right? Uh, I wouldn't go as far to say it's everything you need to know. I don't think there's any certification that does that, but it does outline some key things. So it'll talk more about networking that you would need to know for penetration testing. Uh, it would also talk about things like ARP spoofing or like ARP poisoning, um, network like internal infrastructure attacks, uh, and also some web app, which was really handy considering how I had some experience with that from one, my internship, and two, I was a juice shop. So um, that was not too bad, but it was essentially just basic attacks. And um, yeah, after a while um, of procrastinating it because it was my first certification, uh, I actually dived into it and it actually became really fun learning it and it was actually funner than my university work. So um, I do highly recommend it. So let's talk a bit about the exam now. So the exam, it was, so I did it on the 10th of January, 2021. Uh, I felt like I was adequately prepared for it. I went over all of the slides, the labs, the videos. I made sure I made a good amount of notes, things like that. So the exam was, uh, I think you had about three days or four days to do it, okay? Um, now, in comparison to a normal penetration test, that's completely fine. However, this is EJPT, which is a beginner level certification. So they were being really generous with the time considering the features of the exam, right? So it was a multiple choice exam. 20 questions you had to have 15 out of 20 questions correct to pass uh, there was a practical element to it as well so it wasn't something like security plus where you just answer a bunch of tick box questions and get a pass or fail it was more of it would be like okay well this is an example um, but something like oh what ports are open on this machine or something like that right and you would then have to scan it and then find out what ports are open put them in and then um, 
move on to the next question, things like that. So there was a practical element, but it was um, made concise and condensed down into multiple choice questions. So um, not as relevant for penetration tests, but it does still test your knowledge. So the first day of the exam, I woke up early. I then um, started it. So I practiced on some of the labs, right? I practiced on like two or three of the main labs. Uh, I then proceeded to shut down the lab and then begin the certification process, right? So for those who don't know, you get given an isolated lab VPN network and you have to um, penetration test that uh, based on the 20 multiple choice questions that you do get. So uh, the first day I woke up about uh, eight or nine, started the exam early after a few hours of doing the labs. So I probably started around half 10, 11 ish. <coughs> when I started, one of the labs wasn't closing down, right? So I began the certification process and my timer was counting down for the time I had to do the penetration test in the exam. However, one of the labs was still running and it was still trying to stop. Um, that kept on going for probably about an hour. So I lost about an hour's worth of the exam simply just because one of the labs would not close down. After a while, I did feel that I was over prepared for the exam. So the first day was fine. It was just like reconnaissance, getting used to uh, the applications and like the network, things like that. Um, I did struggle with one of the initial parts, but after I got a foothold on it, uh, I actually managed to uh, go through the rest quite well. Uh, a lot of the stuff they cover in the course is really out of scope for the exam. Um, I'm probably the first person to say this, but uh, yeah, so like the things you learn in the course don't necessarily correlate to what is in the exam, right? Um, obviously that's the same with every exam, everywhere because if you knew all the course then you would just study the parts that are in the exam but it was I felt like it was reasonably quite out of scope um, simply just because of what was taught um, and like what was actually on the exam right so I, I can't go into details about it but that's all I can say about it right so by the third day uh, I double checked all of my answers right there was four answers that could potentially be wrong uh, simply just for the way you interpret the questions, right? So um, after I double checked all my answers, um, I calculated that there would be four that could potentially be wrong, but that's still a passing mark since you need 15 out of 20. Um, so worst case scenario, I get 16 out of 20 and I still pass. So uh, I then submitted my exam results. It's essentially a quiz, right? Um, but they call it an exam. So I'll refer to it as an exam. Uh, so I submitted the exam results and immediately I got back if I passed or failed. Turns out I got 20 out of 20, uh, which is 100%. Um, when the passing mark was 15 out of 20, which is 75%, I believe. So um, it did. I did pretty well. I, I mean, I literally couldn't have got any better, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was a good exam. I learned a lot from it. And uh, I then had about a year's break before I did EWPT, which I did recently. Um, that is a more interesting journey. So if you do want to hear about that, I'll be probably doing a video about that sometime soon. But yeah, so let's just talk about my overall experience with it. So the course content was in depth on certain parts, but it wasn't in depth on others, if that makes sense. But I guess this is just quite typical when it comes to a beginner level certification, because ideally they're not supposed to teach you everything. But um, I did feel that I was teaching you attacks that could potentially uh, be a bit out of scope and a bit like uh, not really used, if that makes sense. Like, um, I'm trying to be as vague as possible here, sorry about that. But uh, the PDF or like the slides, the presentation slides, they were really good. I highly do recommend those. Um, if you just watch the videos and the labs and like try to do the labs, uh, you'll struggle. But if you do the PDF, learn all of the content, make good concise notes, uh, then it should be great. I think I did a video on note taking. So um, if you wanna go watch that, that's great. I use OneNote for the application to take notes and it's really good. So if you're just starting out, I highly do recommend this certification. It covers some foundation knowledge for penetration testing and also some networking for penetration testing assessments as well. So I highly do recommend it. I see a lot of um, cybersecurity uh, enthusiasts and inspire, in like inspired people on LinkedIn uh, get this certification. I highly do recommend it, but one of the, uh, the issues that arises with the cybersecurity enthusiasts I see on LinkedIn all the time is they get EJPT and then they just stop learning. It's it's not one of those certifications where you can just get it and forget it and then get a job. It's one of those ones that consolidates your information, but then if you don't consistently apply it, you'll forget the knowledge that you've 
you've done. So um, if you're gonna be uh, getting this certification, please, please continue to still learn. You need to get things like, uh, so my examples, right? So my pathway is going to be EJPT, which I've got. I then did EWPT, uh, which I got certified in about a month ago. I'm now moving on to ECPPT, which is Elin Security Certified uh, Professional Penetration Tester, and then OSCP, which everyone knows about, but uh, if you don't, it's one of the main ones. Um, it's used as like a HR filter as well. So if you would like to get a pen testing job, um, a lot of the job requirements do sometimes say OSCP, so um, it's always nice to have. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna get Security Plus as well. So um, yeah, that's my roadmap for certifications. If any of you want to uh, use that, you totally can do. I've done my research on it. I highly recommend you do so as well. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna hear about my EWPT review, like I've said before, uh, I'll probably do some video on it. Uh, it'll probably be in a few weeks or like months time maybe. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm Cameron. This is a channel for cybercrime and computer hacking uh, ethically and I'll see you guys in the next video. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing because I'm going to be making more professional videos and production quality videos in the future like this, where we cover things like blockchain, money laundering, dark web, uh, and talk, things like that, um, all ethically and for educational purposes, um, but something that would be like an interesting video, right? So if you do want to see those, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.